Hello everyone, uh, this is the fourth video uh, in the Entrepreneurial Innovative Engineering class where we start talking about, you know, understanding your audience. You know, if you want to build software that helps a lot of people and make a good business out of it, uh, the most important part here is to connect to people and then connect these people to technology. Uh, it doesn't make sense to sit in your room all day, build software without being able to go out there and, and understand what people really need and then go backwards from that into building software. Um, in, a lot of, in a lot of places, when you're building software or with a lot of people, potential clients, uh, you will come into this, um, you'll run into this problem where people don't exactly, people are not exactly going to give you what their problem is. They will try to articulate as much as they can but you have to understand, just like when people go to a doctor, they say, oh, this part of my body hurts, but they don't really understand the, 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 the reason or the fundamental reason why they're feeling the pain. The pain, the source of the pain could be from anywhere, but you know, they're only telling you what they're observing in their own way. Um, so you're gonna have to have, to, to be a good engineer, to be a good innovator, and to actually make good business with people, you have to understand and you have to realize that uh, you have to have this to develop this ability to connect to people and listen very carefully to what they're really trying to tell you not not just what they're saying um, and a lot of times people might give you like people will walk up to you and say I want you to build me a website okay but what they really, really might be asking for is just a mobile app what they really might might be asking for is no project at all. Like what they're trying to accomplish is something out of the box somewhere, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know. And and you have to be honest with your customers. You have to be honest with the people that you're building software for. You know, you have to be pretty straightforward when it comes to what they really need and whether there's something already available out there. Because this is the internet. One way or another, you know, if you try to um, make profits off of a client out of a product that's already there's something already cheaper and easier to use out there they're gonna figure it out and then they will never do business with you again uh, the idea about being a good entrepreneur is to be honest and to be straightforward with people and to be able to um, understand what they really really need uh, and not try to just gouge them for for profits all right um, when you have an audience when you have people the most important thing when you're building software is to be fast. You have to be fast. You have to be able to put a product out there as fast as you can. Keep this in your mind. This is very important. If there is no product, there is no progress, right? You could be writing as much code as you want on the back end, but if there's nothing to show up for for your clients, they will not see progress. It doesn't mean there is any progress for them. So you want to make sure you maintain that visibility, you know, with your client. When you're building software, you have to test your assumptions, right? Uh, it's very important when you're writing software is that you test your software. You have to write methods and tests to verify your software. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. You know, let's go back to the IDE <clears throat> in here. So <clears throat> let's, let's start over. Let's uh, remove all of that. And let's start over with a simple function right I'm going to build a simple function in here that adds two numbers together and returns the result out of that how do you build software in a fashion that first of all uh, puts the assumption you test that you, you you put the test first and then you write the software to verify what you're really doing first of all we're gonna throw something here called not implemented exception so what does that mean it means that my function isn't ready yet there's nothing in there that verifies what this function is doing what we want this function to do is to take two numbers, here's two variables, 
So we're passing in two numbers to this function, and we expect this function to return the result out of that function, right? So what we do here is that in, in, in industrial software, we add in test project. We call it test-driven software. So let's go and add in a test project in here. We could add in X unit test project. And let's call that. So if your project is IEE01, we just do dot tests. You know, naming conventions are very, very important when it comes to building your software, right? So now we want to uh, unit test our function. We want to verify that our function or make an assumption that our function is doing something that we expect it to do and not anything crazy, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to call this program test. So this is the exact same uh, class name that we have. The only difference here is that let me let me get this closer a little bit. Yeah. So the um, it's the exact same class name except that it is dot test. So that just verifies that you're writing tests, right? And then in your test method, you say should add two numbers. So that means the function that you're testing is supposed to add two numbers. Now it's very important that you make a connection between these two projects. So in the references in here and the dependencies, I'm going to add a reference to the existing project. So I'm connecting this project to this project. So I have access to these methods to these, uh, uh, that I'm building in the other project. So now that I'm connecting these two projects, now I should have access to this guy. Let's make sure that this guy is public, meaning it's accessible for us, you know, to be able to, to use and, and, and verify. All right. So we have program and it has, Let's make sure this one is public as well. Public meaning it's something you could see it outside of the function itself. Let's go back here and let's try that again. There's add two numbers, right? So what's our test here? Our test here is let's build. Uh, first of all, we want to, um, to 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 put an expected result. So expected result is five. And we want here to verify actual result. So your program here, if you pass in two and three to it, we want to assert that the expected matches the actual, or the actual matches the expected, expected result. So what we're doing here, we're saying, is my program able to, uh, is my new function is able to add two numbers together? This is you verifying that your work is actually, or your function is working as expected. How do you run that test? You can go up, up top in here, click test, and then run all tests. Obviously, this is going to fail because we said our function is not ready yet. It's not implemented, right? Let's do that. So see how this function here failed? It threw a not implemented exception because there is no implementation in there, right? But I could so easily fool that test by just going back here and saying return five. So if I say return five, this test is going to pass, which means that my test is not uh, inclusive enough, right, to verify the functionality of the, of, of the method that I'm trying to do. My test is not inclusive enough to test multiple different scenarios and all that kind of stuff. So what would we, what would we do with that? What would we do is that we can go here and do multiple numbers, right? We can go and say, here's a bunch, bunch of case scenarios. There is an array of numbers. So this is an array that has a bunch of numbers in it right or we could okay let's do that so integer and then we could say one two three four five here's a bunch of numbers right and then so let's call that first numbers so that's an array of all the first numbers and then here's another array of second numbers new integer 
two, one, five, three, four. And then here's another array of expected result. So the expected result out of each and every one of these would be one and two is three, two and one is three, seven, four and, four and three is seven, uh, seven and 10. This is expected. Now, we're gonna use something here called for loop, which is the, an iteration uh, functionality in programming that allows you to iterate through a list of things, right? In an iteration fashion, we can go and say, start from zero and stop at how how long are these one two three four five so these are four five uh five positions right so we're going to stop at five right and then we need to accumulate meaning that start from zero and for every iteration add another number so we start i equals zero and then you add one so i equals one and two and three and so on and so forth and then we want to move our code here inside of this um scope right so now our expected result is whatever that expected results array is at the position of i expected results in i right and our first number here is first numbers in i and our second result is our second numbers of also I right let's go back here a bit so that means with every iteration we want to verify in here with every iteration we want to verify that the expected and the actual results match right in that case this test will fail if you do control RT that will run your test or you can also do test run all test either way will work let's do control rt this time since we ran it normally the first time and this should fail yeah why did it fail it said expected three actual is five why the actual is five because my, our function is returning nothing but five so now we are forced to actually have our function do the right thing right so now I have no option but to say first number plus second number equals equals the, the total sum of both so would that work let's do control RT again and now everything is passing the function is passing the test of this function is passing because it's actually verifying that your function is adding a two numbers right just like how you verify software you know the functionality of your software you have to also verify your software against the business that you're working with right like you're testing on the on the code level but you also have to test on the people level right you're writing something you're putting it out there for people to try out right and see you know like you have people to be they play the exact same role as a unit test this test that we just have written people will be playing the exact same role you know to verify whether your software is capable of doing what what you want it to do or not right um, in a lot of companies they hire particular people that we call QA or quality assurance uh, engineers they their job is to just test your software against you know uh, the business that you're trying to fulfill right but the tricky part here is you can never actually get a good feedback about your software until you put it in the hands of someone that knows they're going to have to use it on a daily basis which means they're going to do their very best to make sure that the software runs the way they need it to do to, to, to run right they will give you the most sincere the most honest feedback when it comes to um, uh, whether your software is working the way you want it to do to, to work or not and you have to be pre pretty flexible with that and you have to be a little bit of a thick skin when it comes to getting feedback from customers because some customers you know they're they're putting money in this so they have they're gonna have they're gonna be very very straightforward with you they're gonna be 
saying saying to you this this app or this website or whatever you're trying to test here you know is not working for me and let me tell you why when people tell you that your software doesn't work you, sh you shouldn't get emotional you shouldn't get defensive but rather listen to them see you know just like this unit test this is like this function that we've written here you know just understand why the function is failing like remember how when our method here was returning five and we ran our test the the unit test was telling you particularly why it, it thinks that your function isn't function the way it wants to it says I expected that the total of two numbers would be three, but the actual is five. This is what you should be focusing on from as an engineer, you know, focus on why your software isn't getting the right attention from your target audience. You know, you have to put your software out there for free demo or trial and see what people think about your software. People are your unit tests to verify whether your software is capable of doing what it's doing or not. And the, the sooner you engage them at the early stages of development of your software, the better your software becomes. The sooner, the better. You want, them, you want to engage them as early as possible so you don't build up features on top of features in your software and then you find out that the foundation isn't something they want in the first place. So that's it. Uh, try to uh, read about uh, uh, test-driven development (TDD). Uh, try to look up. Try to build a, a calculator as an assignment and try to test drive that. Write tests for subtraction, multiplication, uh, addition, and division, and see how you can drive that with tests. How you can verify that with tests. Write four functions that do the four arithmetic basic operations and verify these with tests and let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you in another video